Okay, let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks. Let's talk about where they're at currently. Obviously, the, you know, a lot of teams, the question always revolves around quarterback. It's especially true with the Seahawks, who they don't need a quarterback. They have one. The question is, does he still want to be there? Are you going to, you know, do you want him? Which, of course, you do. You want to keep Russell Wilson. Uh, it's very hard to win a trade when you trade away Russell Wilson. That's just not a very easy thing to do. So uh, because of that, you want to do whatever you can to keep him in the building. One way to do that might be to just build up your team. So let's talk about just kind of where they're at currently in terms of everything, where they're at in terms of cap space, all of that stuff. Uh, let's just get into it. So here's the list of free agents. And also, so you see at the top of the screen, they have $35 million in cap space. So that's pretty good. But you also have guys that you do have to sign. You know, uh, everyone on this list are their upcoming free agents. The number next to them, that's how many millions of dollars that Pro Football Focus is projecting they will get on the open market so maybe not many like superstars here but some quality players that you don't want to lose and you would like to keep if possible and at the very least you have to replace if you let them walk i think you know maybe the key one Dwayne brown here who wilson has often uh expressed displeasure over the lack of offensive line help uh and you know in a very russell wilson way of trying to not make it uh you know too clear uh, not that, you know, try to bash them necessarily, but I think that, you know, it seems like something that he would probably like to have more of. So losing Brown would probably not be the smartest move. Brown, uh, you know, he's getting up there in age. Uh, I don't know if he's the same player he once was. He is going to be, uh, you know, he's 36 right now. So losing him, that's, that's an, an issue perhaps for sure. You'd probably like to keep him if possible. DJ Reed, who's been a solid corner for them when he's been on the field. So getting him, I think, you know, he played over a thousand snaps last year for the Seahawks. So keeping him, I think probably would be a, a relatively high priority. I think corners matter. Make sure you keep corners. Uh, Quandre Diggs, you know, he's projected for 10 million. He's a, you know, good safety for him. Might be a franchise tag candidate. The franchise tag for safeties isn't as expensive as it is for other positions. So that's certainly an option that you could take. And same thing with Gerald Everett. You can only tag one guy, but you know, you might tag one of those two guys because they're, you know, even though you think you don't think of Everett as like a franchise tag player necessarily, but it's, you know, it's all about like which tags cost more. The tight end tag doesn't cost that much. So that might be a move they make or just sign him for the 9 million. They could, you know, do either one of those options. You also have Brandon Shell, who they're projecting to get about six million. Who's again kind of that like low end starter tackle a, a little bit. I feel like so you know maybe you keep him, maybe you let him walk. I don't know. That's that's another interesting option. Maybe you just let him walk and try to improve. Uh, you know, get a different tackle who could be better. That's definitely an option on the table. Also, Sidney Jones, another corner. So you don't want to lose both your corners here. You have to have guys who can cover. You would like to keep them probably. Also, like Rashad Penny, who was like legitimately, like uh, I think there was some advanced stats that had him as like the best halfback in, fo in football once like towards like in the second half of the year. So that was wild. If all it cost is $2 million to keep him, I think that's certainly worth it. Geno Smith for $4 million, he's been a quality backup. You could let him go and go with a cheaper option, I think. That's that's something I could see happening. So, I don't know. I find that interesting. Uh, so, again, if you, if you do leave him or if you do let him walk, you do have to replace him. That's kind of part of this is you can't just let these guys walk for nothing. You do have to like sign somebody if you let him walk. Also, someone like Ethan uh, Pokic, who's kind of been a, a, a backup for the most part for most of his career. But if you let him walk, you do have to replace him with somebody. But he might be someone you do see uh, go here in free agency. So what all this means is that if they want to re-sign everybody, they would need 57 million, meaning they would have to clear 22 million. So you're in an okay spot. You might not need to re-sign all of these guys. A few you might let walk and also uh, 22 million dollars you can certainly spend that much over the cap there's ways that you you know, using restructures and everything you'll be fine cap space wise to at least keep your roster as for the players they could think about cutting here so i put russell wilson just on the list just because uh you know uh, obviously you would never cut him but that you know the money you would save is the same for a cut or for a trade so you could save 11 million dollars here uh, if you do decide to trade him now you're not saving a ton so like the cap hit isn't really helping you that much now and for future years it's better but for this year it's just 11 million so uh doesn't really help you that much there in terms of cap space if you're trading russell wilson it's because you don't think he'll play for you if you don't trade him or you believe that like the value you get back is worth losing a russell wilson uh 
you know, I, I don't think either of those are options. I think that you keep Russell Wilson if you're the Seahawks. I also put Bobby Wagner, who, again, uh, I think it'd be silly to cut. Quite frankly, you could, again, consider trading him. Maybe he is 31. I don't know how much you would get for him. But, you know, uh, he wouldn't be too much dead cap, and he would save $16 million, which is why he's on this list. But he's really good. So he's, like, I'd rather have Bobby Wagner than have that cap space. And quite frankly, I think you can make that argument with really everyone on this list. Like, Puna Ford is good. I don't want to run him out of town. Uh, Chris Carson, he's he's a halfback. So kind of anytime a halfback makes like a few million, I'll put him on the list, but I'm not running him out of town necessarily. And Jason Myers, like 4 million for a really good kicker. Uh, like that's totally worth it. Now his, you know, overall numbers weren't as great in 2021 as they were in 2020. He had a perfect field goal percentage in 2020. So nowhere to go, but down, uh, did drop to 73.9. Not horrible. You know, over the course of his career, it's 84.7. Like, you know, it's fine to pay a kicker that much money, I think. And you know what you're going to get with him. Uh, I, I think, you know, kind of thing is you don't want to be stuck of a kicker who sucks. Uh, keep Jason Myers. But again, I always put them on. If a special teams guy is getting more than a few million, just like running backs, I'm going to put them on the list. They're an option on the table for the Seahawks, although I wouldn't take it. Going over here now, so this is where the Seahawks ranked in each PFF court category last year. This can be a good way to kind of see what they need to improve upon for the future. And the first thing is like the passing game. That should be improved just with Russell Wilson staying healthy all year. Like that's just first. It's like, okay, Russell Wilson stays healthy. Like that should be number one. We're good. Uh, and we don't have to, you know, worry too much. Now, Russell Wilson wasn't great when he was healthy. He wasn't typical of Russell Wilson, but at least he was on the field. I'm not sure how healthy he was. The assumption is not that Russell Wilson has just completely lost a step and now sucks at this point in his career. He's 33. Quarterbacks play that long. And maybe you could argue a big chunk of his play is because of his running ability. Maybe that's gone a little bit, but I don't know. I don't think so. I think that he still can move. I think he still is a quality player and just kind of had a down year in limited time. Offensive line is, you know, consistently like not this abysmal op offensive line like some people like to make it out to be it's not like this worst in football but it's not good it's been a consistent like tier four out of five offensive line I've always kind of felt like uh, receiving core is a big disappointment as well because you have DK Metcalf and you have Tyler Lockett but you need a third option and you really do and this is a big thing like you know that's why I didn't hate the Dwayne Eskridge pick I wasn't a huge fan of the player but I didn't hate going after a receiver there because I think that makes sense and I think going after a receiver again maybe you you sign somebody uh that could go a long way and I think that that could make this Seattle team a lot more dangerous so I know there's bigger holes so to speak but I think that could actually add more value uh you know running game and run defense very good so that's what you got going for you. So, hey, if it was uh, 1985, maybe you'd be a championship contender. Uh, obviously, football has changed a lot. It's a passing league now, so I just don't know how much that matters. But it still does matter. There's still obviously a lot of value in that. So that's good. You can you know build around that. Pass rush has to be better. 30th is just that's not good enough. And the coverage really has to be better. You know, 24th, I don't think it's good enough. And, you know, uh, you have guys like Sidney Jones and DJ Reed Jr. who are, like, you know, solid. They're, they're guys who can play. And quite frankly, part of me wonders how much of this coverage not being the best is less about the players and more about the scheme itself. And it is kind of a very basic scheme at this point and a bit of an outdated scheme that it seems like they're going to continue with. So that's kind of a concern. So, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, with Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, they're just such a weird and interesting interesting team. Typically, we always kind of view this as, hey, you get that elite quarterback and you're fine. Like things will work out. You're going to be consistent contenders. Uh, and, you know, now they've kind of struggled a little bit. Although I, I should mention part of why it has happened is they didn't have elite quarterback play this year for the first time in a while. So that's kind of why we've seen some of these other issues. And I think you can live with other issues if you have that elite quarterback play, but it's hard when you don't. And so the first thing they have to do is keep elite quarterback play, which would be to keep Russell Wilson and I hope that he does not fall off a cliff anytime soon. And I think there's other ways you could improve the team. Getting a third receiver would help. Of course, improving the offensive line would go a long way. Improving the defensive line in terms of pass rush could go a long way because they stopped the run well. It's the pass rush that they need some help with uh, and maybe just get a little more creative uh, defensively, I think could go a long way. So that's what I think about Seattle. Not in the worst of spots by any means. You could be a lot worse, but you know they got some work to do. I think that's fair to say as well. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.